Never in my life did I imagine that I'd be making a YouTube video about a stalker threatening my life, but here we are. If you couldn't tell from the title or the intro of this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience with a stalker threatening my life, but not just any person an ex-friend. Before I go on, if you're unfamiliar with me, hi, my name is Jory. I'm a full-time content creator on TikTok as of three years ago. And if you are familiar with me, you'll probably notice that this isn't my normal background. And that's because I had to move for my safety. On September 3rd, I packed up my animals, my partner, and all of my belongings, and we got out. Because there are so many moving parts of this story, I will be referencing my phone a lot. So you'll probably see me looking at the screen. And that's so I can keep track of every single moving piece because trust me, it is long. As I said before, the person who is threatening my life and who is a stalker is a former friend. And not only a former friend, but another trans person. So this video isn't being made lightly. In fact, I've been going back and forth on whether I should make it or not for a while. But the reality is, I know this person is dangerous and I want to warn other people. And also, I want to stand up for myself after everything that I've endured at the hands of this person. I do want to say that in my current position, I am safe. Thankfully, I got out and she can no longer hurt me. And she knows she can no longer hurt me. But I'll get into that later. With that said, to paint a picture of the threats that I've been receiving by her, they include things like saying that she's going to use my personal information to make my life a living hell. It's a dangerous thing when people have personal information. Just say that. Don't play games with people like that. Run and find out. Because that's about what to happen. She also said she wants to, quote, bite my face off and f my FFS. Yo, if they have a, if they ever, if they ever have a f TikTok versus f Twitch boxing creators match, oh, b I already have the name of the motherfucker I want. Beat the brakes is a fuck understatement what the fuck I would do. I'd be known as a fuck Mike Tyson. I'd fuck bite to my face off. Fuck your fuck FFS. For those of you that don't know, facial feminization surgery or FFS is something that I underwent back in May of last year. And she said she wants to mutilate my face. At this point, you're probably like, those are just threats, but they're kind of incredible or innocuous, but they get worse. Shortly after stating all that, she said she's the kind of person who would buy a plane ticket and pull up to my door. I'm the type of bitch to buy a plane ticket and show up at your doorstep. And while all of these might just seem like threats that she made on a live stream to try to scare me, I'm going to get into why they're incredibly credible and why they are dangerous and terrifying. After stating all of that, she pulled out a firearm. Now I will say that Lexi lives in Seattle and I currently live in LA, but she has my phone number and my address and she's already threatened to show up to my home. So the second I saw her pull out the firearm, I picked up and I left. While all of this was going on, her community was goading her on, telling her things like we'd grab a shovel to help hide the body. Oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm almost at that point. Oh. And one person, including a former moderator of mine, Bell Amato, was trying to protect her from the terms of service of Twitch by stating that it wasn't a real gun, it was a Minecraft gun. Let me make it abundantly clear, this is a group of white people talking about lynching me, all because I was a quote-unquote bad friend. And how was I a bad friend? To this day, I still don't really know. But let's get into the timeline of everything. I met Lexi back in April when I was looking for creators to raid on Twitch. I was looking for other trans women to help platform and direct my followers to, and I ended up seeing her. I decided to raid her, and unfortunately her raids were turned off that night, but she came into my stream the next day, and she was very supportive, almost overly supportive, and in hindsight, it was probably love bombing. She kept sending tips and subscribers, and over the next couple weeks, we would get close and start streaming together, and that's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted to make other friends on the platform, especially people that were smaller creators, so that I could help them. I have about 2.5 million followers on TikTok, and so I felt it was my duty to help platform other small creators. Lexi and I would have absolutely no issues from the time we met in April until after July. Like I said, Lexi and I would often stream together, and I noticed Lexi would start to play a lot of the same games that I was playing on my community because we shared a large portion of our community. In mid-May, she would announce that she was re-diagnosed with cancer, and that was obviously really devastating. I don't want to go too much more into that because that is her personal business, and while she did threaten me, I don't feel it's my place to really talk about it publicly. It is, however, slightly related to the story, so it's definitely worth noting. But back to the portion of talking about how she would play a lot of the same games that I play, I would end up doing things like playing Among Us, which she would buy when she saw me play it. She would watch me play Jackbox and buy a whole bunch of different copies of different Jackboxes. A lot of the games that I ended up playing, she ended up playing on stream heavily. And while I did notice an influence in the type of content that she was making based on the people that were coming in, I never really thought too much of it. In early June, I would announce that I was about to achieve partner on Twitch as well as partner plus tier one. And interestingly enough, 
Within a day or two, she told me that she had been reached out to by Twitch for the same thing. At the time, I would take it at face value and celebrate that my friend was being celebrated and receiving these accolades. To me, I always want to see my friend succeed and to know that she was succeeding and doing well made me genuinely happy. Around the time that I got verified, I received a purple check mark on the platform. It's pretty standard procedure where Twitch gives you a verification mark by giving you a check after you receive partner. I remember looking at my check that night and going and checking to see if Lexi had received it. The following day after receiving partner, I asked Lexi what was going on with her partner status, and she said Twitch hadn't gotten back to her yet. Again, I didn't think too much of it. Twitch is a busy platform and they have a tendency to prioritize people that are already partnered. It wasn't until a week or two later when I checked back in that she changed her story. Initially, she had told me that Twitch reached out and offered her partner plus tier one, two, and partner. And later on, she would go back and change her story to say that Twitch hadn't offered her partner, they had asked her to apply. But she told me it was okay because she had been reached out to with partner plus tier 2 regardless and she was accepted for it. After uncovering some of her lies that would come later on, I would then realize that everything that she said about her partnership was a lie. Not only does the platform Twitch not actually reach out to people for independent contracts, but she never met the requirement that it would take for partner plus tier 2. Partner plus tier 2 is also something that's become automated. It's based on a number of subscribers that I for a fact know she never had. And after realizing that she was a dangerous person and starting to uncover her lies, I would go back. And I would realize that she never met the requirements for partner. So it was impossible not only because Twitch doesn't reach out for independent contracts, but she would have never been the recipient of partner because she was never qualified. In late June of this year, she would come down to visit me for a week from Seattle. The week would be seemingly normal. On the first night that she came down to collab, we streamed for about an hour or two, and it was honestly pretty fun. But I quickly realized that I was out of my element. The second day of the trip, Lexi would approach me and ask me when I wanted to go on live and stream, and I would let her know that I was having more fun as friends, but if she wanted to stream, that I would be happy to. And she reassured me that she had no problem just hanging out as friends. In reality, there were two reasons that I didn't want to jump on stream, and one was because I genuinely was having fun, but two was because I had a lot of people over. Generally, I'm a person that sticks to their schedule. I don't see a lot of people super often. And so breaking out of that and trying to make content or be on stream with other people was incredibly draining. Despite that, I made every attempt to let her know that if she wanted to, because she was there for this, I would be happy to jump on stream with her. And again, every time she would reassure me that it was fine, that she was just happy to hang out as friends. So I didn't think too much of it. The rest of the trip was relatively normal, although there were some red flags. But I try to see the best in people, especially those that I call my friends, so I tried not to raise concerns about them. The week was spent doing beach trips, going out to restaurants, hanging out at home, and hanging out by the pool. And again, while there were some red flags, for the most part I had fun, and I had no issues with Lexi. Hey, it's Dory in post-production, and there's a detail that I left out initially when I filmed this video. As you know, Lexi spent a week with me, but what I neglected to mention initially was that the trip was supposed to be a three-day trip at first. As I said, after the first night, I established that I just wanted to hang out, but I was open to filming and collabing if she wanted to, and every single time she let me know that that was fine. Near the end of the originally scheduled trip, she asked if she could extend it because she was having fun and she wanted to continue the friends trip, and so she did. She extended it from three days to a week. So it's strange that Lexi would later go on and act as if I slighted her and didn't want her on my platform. Form. And it's also inconsistent with the entire nature of our friendship. I started off by going and finding her to raid her, and I would raid her continuously, the same way that I would with other members of my community or other small queer creators, just because I wanted to. Not because I ever expected anything returned, but rather because I just wanted to help other queer people and make friends. So it's strange that Lexi would later go on and act as if I slighted her by not wanting her on my platform and not collabing with her while on the trip. Because one, she could have just asked to stream at any point and I would have gladly said yes. And two, if she really hated it so much, then why would she extend from three days to seven? One of the major red flags that would occur over her time spending a week with me was her constant insistence on pushing me to move back to Seattle. Like I said, Lexi lives in Seattle, and every single day we would have multiple conversations a day where Lexi was trying to convince me to move to Seattle. A lot of the conversations around moving to Seattle involved offering me money. She would often say things like, I'll be your sugar mama. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. I'll make sure that you're good financially and you'll have me there. And every single 
single time I would remind her that I was miserable when I lived in Seattle, so I didn't want to go back whether or not it was financially the best thing for me. To me, it struck me as a red flag that you wanted me so badly that you would be willing to compromise my happiness to be closer to me, but also to depend on you financially. The end of the trip would come, we would say our goodbyes, and I thought everything for the most part was normal, but I guess it wasn't. Over the following weeks towards the end of the trip leading into late July, Lexi would show up in my stream less and less and we would have less conversations. My partner would ask me if there was anything going on between us or if she had any ill will towards us and I kept reassuring my partner that everything was fine, that perhaps Lexi was going through things because of her sickness. And in my mind, everything was fine. On July 22nd, Lexi would send me a long text message detailing that people in my community were speaking poorly about her. And immediately, I would call her and we would have a 50 minute conversation. This conversation is where everything started to go south. The conversation started with her letting me know that people in my community were speaking negatively about her. She would go on to accusing me of being aware of it, which I wasn't, and I would assure her that I wasn't aware of anything that was going on. I do want to add a little bit of context as to conversations that were happening with my community members. Because again, at the time, I had no idea, and later on, I did learn what was happening. Before I go on, when I say that I was unaware of these conversations happening, it's because they weren't happening on my stream. They weren't happening in my Discord. They weren't happening in any place that I would have been around or had domain over and therefore be aware of. So these conversations were truly just people talking about Lexi that happened to be my viewers. With that said, I would later find out that the conversations in question were people going to Lexi to give her advice on how to make her stream better. And from what I've gathered, it was basically somebody saying, hey, on your streams you do a lot of makeup and it doesn't feel like you interact with us more. So maybe if you did something that was a little bit more engaging, you would succeed better as a streamer. This came because Lexi would send out daily messages on her Discord letting people know that she was upset about the lack of viewership and the lack of people that supported her. And after that conversation was over, she blew up on the person that brought it to her. That person would then get frustrated at Lexi's response, go to another Discord, and talk about Lexi with a few of my community members, detailing that they feel like her Discord messages were manipulative and unfair to her viewers, and that ultimately they feel uncomfortable because they feel like they're being guilted into watching her stream, and a couple of people in that conversation would eventually go back to Lexi and let her know that that conversation took place. This would lead Lexi to the conclusion that people were talking shit about her in my community and therefore I was aware of it. And in hindsight, the things that were being said weren't very off base, nor were they unfair to her character and the way that she acted. I remember her asking me if there was any bad blood between us and I said no of course not why would you think there is? We would go on to talk about a number of different things but one of the things that really stuck out to me was the fact that Lexi said honestly the reason I'm feeling like this is because I do experience jealousy and I compare myself to those around me and quote I can't expect you to just hand me 2 million followers. That struck me as a huge red flag, but again, as somebody who is trying to see the best in my friend, I tried not to make too much of it. One of the main points that she drove home about people speaking negatively about her from my community was that I, as a friend, should make her aware of it. And this is really important. The end of the conversation would be about 30 minutes of her telling me about what I need to do to make my community members happy that had been expressing open concerns in her space i.e. her discord. She had been allowing people to talk about me in her discord, and when she told me that there were just some concerns, I didn't think too much of it. In fact, I didn't pry at all because I believed that she was just letting people express concerns. The things that she brought up to me from my community were that people were saying that they felt that they were being ignored. And I will say that it was a small group of people, about five or so people, stating that. And one of the suggestions that she gave me was to use slow mode on Twitch. On this call, I let Lexi know that I would not be implementing slow mode because I've had negative experiences with people trying to get parasocial. And one of the red flags that I look for is when people try to get too much access to me without really considering why it is that I run things the way that I do. I explained to her that in a previous Discord, I had somebody share my OnlyFans picture, somebody who I trusted and who was a moderator, and that tainted my view of Discord altogether. And that after that, I would have a number of people on different Discords try to get proximity to me and become very parasocial, oftentimes telling me how to run things and why to run things the way that they want them, but never really considering me. So I let her know that if people leave my community because they don't feel seen, I understand. But ultimately, things work for the most of us, and especially me, and I need to be considered considered when it comes to how things run. I would leave the phone call with the resolution that I go on stream that night and I let people know to be nicer to Lexi and people in my community. But unfortunately, that's when things took a turn. Immediately after getting off the phone, my partner sent me screenshots from people that had been in her discord that were closer to me, letting me know that I had been wiretapped. 
that she had been illegally broadcasting our conversation to her Discord, including the people that were speaking about me. I would also learn that the open concerns that people had about me were alleging that I was a manipulative and toxic partner, claiming that I enjoy being the center of hate and acting as if I take credit for things that I have never done. I also wanted to add something to the point that I take credit for things that I've never done. Shortly after connecting with Lexi and her supposed announcement to receive partner, she would come into my stream regularly and let me know that everything that she's accomplished on this platform is because of me. And every single time I would reassure her that it wasn't me and that it was in fact her work. This is something that I did both publicly and privately on our call in July 22nd because I believe in giving people credit for the work that they do. But because again, this was supposed to be my friend. I wanted to encourage her and empower her and make her feel good about the work and her success. So the idea that I was taking credit for something that I have both publicly and privately acknowledged wasn't my doing was strange. And it just reinforces the fact that Lexi didn't care if people were speaking negatively about me so long as there were people speaking in her space at all. Not only were all of these complaints completely unfounded and unfair, but it was the exact kind of shit talking that you would expect somebody like Lexi who wants her friends to give her a heads up when people are talking about to let me know. And instead, she lied to me. She lied by omission and she kept that information from me. And not only did she keep that information from me, she broadcasted a private conversation while giving people a space to speak negatively about me. That's when I realized that Lexi was dangerous and that's when I started to quiet quit the friendship. That night, I would still get on stream and let people know to be kinder. I would follow up on the things that I promised her I would do and I would take a break from stream. About a week later, a few of the members that had talked shit about her started reaching out to Lexi and letting her know that she was a terrible person. Messages would include things like you're a bad friend for allowing people to talk shit about Jory, you're a hypocrite, you are self-absorbed, you act like a child, and you wiretapped her and Lexi would go nuclear. That morning, I would wake up to screenshots from both sides where Lexi alleged that somebody in my community wished cancer on her. And I would receive the screenshots from not only Lexi, but my community members showing exactly what happened. One thing that I also want to add is the fact that Lexi also lied by omission on these text messages. Now, I can't show you the exact text messages that Lexi did send me. What I can do is I can show you the screenshots of the conversations from that. Because thankfully, the people that were involved did consent to having them shown on screen. If you want to, you can pause to read or screenshot themselves so you can zoom in. But one thing you'll notice is that at no point was she wish cancer in any of them. And the only reason I saw the original message where she was quote unquote wished cancer upon was because the person who wished cancer upon her sent me the screenshot in which she claimed that she was being wished cancer upon. Lexi's girlfriend Tati would receive a message from one of my community members named Hazel saying, hope she saves me a seat in hell. Tati would then respond by saying, I'll meet you there, proving that this conversation was taken at face value when it was up to Tati. But when it got back to Lexi, she was alleging that that was a wish for her to have cancer. And I feel like I really shouldn't have to explain this because it's very obvious what it means. Nobody was saying that they wanted Lexi to have cancer. They're saying you're a bad person and I'll see you in hell for it. But of course, it became something that Lexi could blow out of the water and make it seem like she was being victimized in a way that she never was. Was it mean? Sure. But wasn't it also mean that Lexi wiretapped me and tried to use me and felt so jealous of me and entitled to 2 million followers that she literally broadcasted a private conversation? Yes. Something that I find funny and ironic is that one of Lexi's community members explicitly wished cancer on my community members. This was then brought to Lexi's attention via her DMs. And while I can't show you the DM, I can tell you what it said. Lexi said that it was okay for people to wish cancer on my community members because they were going to her defense. Again, continuing the theme of Lexi allowing people to do things in her name and her doing things in people's name that she would find inexcusable if anybody else did it. At the end of the conversation, Hazel would also sign off with a meme that says, boobs bounce when I walk. This would also be grossly misinterpreted to be transphobic towards Lexi. Lexi claiming that because she as a trans woman has smaller breasts and somebody saying that their boobs bounce when they walk, that was transphobic. But the irony is that the message came from another trans woman, one who doesn't have surgery and one who doesn't have HRT, which means she has no breasts. It was just a flippant joke that was again blown out of proportion, but anything Lexi can use to victimize herself and attack other people, she will, and she'll grossly misconstrue it because it gives her a storyline. Following that, I would end up taking a three-week break. And during that break, I would contract COVID. Lexi and I would talk a few times on the phone, and at this point, I was just trying to keep the peace. But something struck me as really strange throughout the conversations that we had while I was on my break. Lexi was aware that I had COVID, and she would repeatedly tell me that she had my address and that she wanted to send me a care package. And I remember thinking like, this feels weird. Am I thinking too deeply into this? Am I reading into this too much? 
is she trying to threaten me? Because it wasn't, hey, I have a care package for you. Is it okay if I send it? It was, you know, I have your address, right? I was thinking about sending you a care package because I have your address and I didn't want it to get to you and you wonder who has my address. So is it okay if I send you a care package to your address? That struck me as incredibly strange. And I knew in the deepest pits of my heart that it was a threat, but I was trying to hope for the best. Around August 20th or 21st, I would come back after about three weeks off stream and I wouldn't address anything. During one of the calls, I did tell Lexi that I would come back and put up some rules. I sat on a fucking phone call and was told that rules would be implemented, things would be discussed, it'd be handled, blah, blah, blah. One of the things that I had been dealing with was a declining mental health, not only because of what had been going on, but because of external sources, which is why I was shocked to hear her say this. It's not like I didn't hide anything from you guys about that situation. Like that's a fucked up part. Except you did hide things from them. You hid the fact that in addition to me talking about how I would have some rules set up for when I came back, that I was struggling with my mental health and I had been fighting my health care to try to get access to a psych eval for nine months. You knew that my mental health was declining. You knew I was fighting to get access to medication. And as somebody who constantly boasts about how you care about other people's mental health, I know I've been saying this word a lot, but it was ironic for you to omit that. But then again, it was ironic for you to expect me to disclose information about conversations that I didn't take part of and wasn't aware of, while you allowed people to talk shit about me in your own discord. In addition to that, you framed me talking about getting approved for laser and getting approved for my psych eval as me gloating about my approvals. Meanwhile, they just hop back on and talk about how they fucking got approved for this or this and that. And just like fucking, yeah. To be honest with you, I was petrified at that point and I had no idea how to move forward. Not only was I afraid of you because you had already proven that you were untrustworthy, but at this point I had already unlocked your public record. So I knew exactly what you were capable of. And to be honest, at this point, none of this matters because you still broke and violated my trust by wiretapping me. You also admitted that the only reason you act like this is because you're jealous of me. So of course, I'm not going to talk about and implement rules and try to protect you. I'm trying to escape the damage that you have proven you can cause me. On September 2nd, things really ramped up. She would go on to say that she was going to start her Twitch live with a more shady title. However, one of her community members and her partner Tati kept her from being shady. She said that the dust had settled or had it. Maybe this was the calm before the storm. And on September 3rd, she would start threatening my life. She started off by saying that you don't fuck with people who have your personal information. It's a dangerous game. It's a dangerous thing when people have personal information. Just say that. Don't play games with people like that. She then followed that up by saying that she would make my life a living hell. She also followed it up by saying that she's the kind of person to buy a plane ticket and show up at your home. I'm the type of bitch to buy a plane ticket and show up at your fucking doorstep. She would then go on to detail how she wanted to quote bite my face off like Mike Tyson. Yo, if they have a if they ever if they ever have a fucking TikTok versus fucking Twitch boxing fucking creators match, oh bitch, I already have the name of the motherfucker I want. Beat the brakes is a fucking understatement what the fuck I would do. I'd be known as a fucking tr Mike Tyson, I'd fucking bite my fucking face off. Fuck your fucking FFS. And lastly, and most scarily, she would pull out a gun. During the three-week break, when Lexi was talking about how she had my address, I remembered that I had her full government name. I did a background search on her. Not only was it terrifying that she was threatening my life and to dox me and pulling out guns, but Lexi's a convicted felon stalker and somebody who has been convicted for threats to kill, which is part of what added to my fear and why I felt paralyzed for the three weeks that I didn't stream. I didn't know how to handle things and I wanted to just act quietly and peacefully. But at this point, she was threatening to do the same things that she did that caused her to get a stalking charge. She threatened to show up to my home unannounced. She threatened to dox me. And by pulling out a gun after making multiple threats to my life and my safety, she was threatening my life without saying so. That day, I would pack up and leave, get an Airbnb, and I would get out. It's crazy to think that all of this stemmed from something that truly wasn't ever an issue, and it became something that was so explosive for no reason. I want to take a moment to talk about how incredibly hard it is to be convicted for stalking as well. The wild thing about stalking charges is that they're incredibly hard to prove and to get pushed by the court. So the fact that she had been convicted for stalking was so incredibly dangerous and telling of her character. But it also put into perspective why that gun was extra terrifying. People that are convicted with stalking in the state of Washington aren't allowed to own guns, 
which means that that gun is an illegally held gun. Coupled with the fact that she had already been charged with threats of homicide, I was terrified, so obviously I had to get out. The following few days, Lexi would go on and slander my character, calling me selfish and clout thirsty despite the fact that she was jealous of my 2 million followers and made it abundantly clear to me. Doing things like claiming that when I raised 4 million dollars for an organization called Point of Pride that I was doing so selfishly and that she's the kind of person that could just run a marathon herself. Other people out there in the same position I am as a streamer, like they just don't do shit like that. I'm sorry to say this, but majority of the fucking people I've run across that do this shit professionally don't share at all. So you're admitting that you feel entitled to other people's platforms. They don't do raids or they fucking barely help other people out or they fucking like, I'm sorry, they don't. I've yet to meet anybody that does the things I do. Except I did share. In fact, I raided you consistently along with other members of my community and even people outside of my community. And I'm going to call bullshit real quick. I raid more than you ever have on Twitch. But not just that. On our private call on July 22nd that you wiretapped, you literally admitted to the fact that you don't really like raids. When I was talking about how I was okay with people being upset about the fact that I won't do slow mode because I respect that my space might not always fit everyone and that I need to prioritize myself, you said I would never want to lose community members. And so I don't really raid. So it's rich that you're now getting on and act as if you are this holy grail of a human being that is so kind and so selfless and that you raid people all the time because you don't. On a personal level, not for fucking clout. Here's the thing about doing things on a personal level. You don't know the things that I've done personally for people because I don't bring it to the internet. That's kind of the point. And you've completely contradicted yourself and defeated the purpose by saying that you could do these grandiose things and that you are this virtuous person that would be unlike everybody else. But think about it. You have a small platform and look at the way that you use it. Why would I believe as a viewer that if you were given a larger platform, you would somehow be better? I'm not touting some fucking shit I did on fucking TikTok or fucking Instagram because I think I fucking saved the world because I showed up on a fucking a marathon to help out. I'm the type of bitch I'll go set up a marathon my fucking self to go help people and make it happen. Oh, and by the way, I did organize the TikTokathon. I was part of the people that helped organize it. Something that you don't seem to understand is actual community. Because your community isn't allowed to do anything but revolve around you. Literally, I like, Tati was at the point of banning some people that are fucking mods because they don't know how to fucking find time and place for what they do and things. And I hate that I have to do this at the beginning of my fucking stream, but I'm laying the fucking rules out because Dami Mommy's back. If you don't fucking like my rules, I will fucking put you in fucking timeout or I'll kick you the fuck out. I'm not playing these games no more. Stop being fucking weird in the chat. Stop asking me fucking stupid questions. Stop being all fucking lovey-dovey on each other like in the middle of fucking chat. It's weird. This is my living room. This is my house. My stream is my home. Don't fucking do shit like make out with each other basically in chat while I'm in the middle of fucking stream. I'm just gonna do it because next time I'll call y'all by your name. Period. That's how we're doing things from here on out. I'm here to have a good time, do my job and do a stream and have you guys have fun and let you guys enjoy the things that I do in my life on a daily basis. If you didn't catch it, that's a really long-winded way of Lexi saying that she doesn't want people focusing on anybody but her in the stream. In fact, she often encourages people to sexualize her and talk sexually. Use me like a bowling shoe and stuff me. You're talking to a girl that deals with anything from nine inches and up. My biggest one is 15.9 inches long. It tickles my inside of my belly button. So it's fascinating that she would focus on the aspect of people being lovey-dovey on each other. She doesn't want you making out unless it's with her. If you talk about how sexually attracted you are to her, she'll always thank you. But if you do it with anybody else or if you act in any other way where somebody else is getting the attention, then it's a problem? I thought this was a community. I thought this was a group of people coming together. But is that group only allowed to exist when all of the positive attention is on you? And I would wager yes, because that's one of the issues that you created with me. You constantly acted as if people in my community were comparing us when in reality, it's been you all along. And I know that because I've spoken to all of them. And the vast majority of them don't even talk to each other anymore. So there's no reason for them to keep up a facade and try to protect each other because they're not even friends. Lexi, you don't know what a community is because a community in your mind is people who worship you to the point where people feel like they have to explain why they've been gone from your stream for three days because otherwise you act angry towards them. You treat your following like a cult and you are their leader. And that's further reaffirmed by the fact that she acts slighted anytime somebody leaves her discord. I smell bullshit amidst. Somebody else left discord, so... 
don't know if y'all know that. The way she speaks is reminiscent of a partner who is abusive. One that tells you that you'll never find somebody who treats you as well as I treat you. One that forces you to stay with them at all costs. And one that doesn't respect you or view you as a human with agency over yourself. Lexi has been proven to be incredibly dangerous. Doing things like bragging about the fact that she would terrorize people from a young age. I did fucking hate a shit. Like, yo, I used to fucking hit licks and fucking kick in doors and rob fucking dominoes and shit as a fucking kid. All kinds of fucked up shit that literally probably scarred people's fucking lives and gave them fucking PTSD. To gloating about the fact that she gets annoyed when people don't like the fact that she supports abusive musicians. Well, see, I love Marilyn Manson, but when all the fucking like Rose McGowan stuff and all that shit happened, it fucking ended up being such a shitty thing because like I couldn't even listen to fucking Marilyn Manson without someone like bitching about it. Oh my god, don't you know? It ended up being a shitty thing, not because somebody was being abused, but because you didn't want to catch heat for listening to an abuser's music? I guess that's the beauty of being a pathological liar. You can't sit on stream for 12 hours a day pretending to be a kind person without shit coming out about you. Any normal person would think, wow, my favorite musician's a piece of shit. But no, not Lexi. Lexi is worried about the optics of how she's going to be perceived when she supports shitty people that display the same behaviors as her. Lexi is evil. And not only that, but she's a liar. Over the time that I took off stream, not only did I uncover some of the lies such as the fact that she was getting ready to get Twitch partner, or lies about why it is that we had a falling out, but Lexi would lie about the smallest things. In fact, on that trip where she came over to my home back in June of this year, I remember her handing me this art that she painted herself, and when she handed it to me, she said, I'm not as good at traditional mediums, so I'm sorry that it's bad. But of course, as a friend, I would just be happy to receive art my friend made. Shortly after that, she would DM my partner some digital art that she pounded out because she's so much better at digital art. And I remember my first reaction being, wow, this looks like AI, but you must be a really good artist. And I never looked into it too deeply. But after I started unfolding the lies and uncovering everything about her, I went back and looked at that art and I realized that it is in fact AI. From things like my arms growing out of a couch, to having extra hands added, to my partner's tattoo floating off of her skin, to inconsistencies in the texture of her sweater, to zippers being added. This was something so simple that you didn't have to lie about, and yet she felt the need to. And after inspecting it, I realized that this digital art that she had pounded out in a few hours had actually been sent to her by somebody on Discord. So why would she lie about it? Over the course of our falling out and her streams, she would also lie and say that she used to write people's dissertation for college in a week. I used to write papers like overnight for people. I'd write somebody's dissertation for them on shit like in a week's time and guarantee them an A. And if you know anything about a dissertation or how Lexi writes, you know that it's not only impossible to do in a week, but it's impossible for somebody who writes like this. She would also go on to say that she was close to a PhD in fine arts. I don't know about you, but I don't think anybody with a PhD in fine arts has no understanding of anatomy, no understanding of shadows, no understanding of lighting composition or values, and no understanding of art to the point where they heavily rely on AI. If you're wondering where we are today in this, obviously I'm safe, I've moved, and there's no way that she can dox my address and therefore endanger me. But this entire situation really sucks because it forced me to move at a time when my dog has to be put down, and so now my dog has to be put down down in a home that isn't his home and this is shitty for so many reasons but that one for whatever reason really hurts but today i went on live and i announced that i had moved and i did see a few of the people including my former moderator the same one who tried to say it was a minecraft gun to protect lexi from getting deplatformed, sharing my live to her when she came on live all of a sudden things were changed after five days of violent rhetoric and attacks on my character all of a sudden lexi was calm and happy and inspiring you lost four three earlier oh that's the worst i'm sorry you guys lost I'm sure you guys played your ass off. People respect you more for your morals and who you are as a person than they will if you got to win. Morals? Morals? Girl, morals? <laughs> There's a few things that I want to add to this and I'll probably be reading them off my phone because I want to be as concise as possible about what I'm going to say. Despite my partner's involvement equally, she was never the target of this. She was never the one that was threatened. She was always infantilized, and I was made to be the stereotypical selfish, evil, and mean-spirited person. It's hard to detach the racist connotation of how in every position from my relationship to my friendship, I was this big bad person, and the poor white people around me needed to be protected. 
It didn't matter that my partner was involved equally. I was a bad partner. And it didn't matter that Lexi threatened me because I was a bad friend. Let me make this clear. I don't want revenge on her in any capacity. Since I've announced that I've moved, Lexi has been completely changing the way that she's acted. From acting dangerous and violent to acting sad and pathetic. And this, I would assume, is all done as a ruse to garner sympathy and for people to feel bad. And I genuinely do. But here's what gets me. She doesn't feel bad about wiretapping me. She doesn't feel bad about trying to manipulate me into dropping people that care about me genuinely for some clout. She doesn't care about the fact that my dogs last week wasn't spent in the comfort of his home because she threatened me and forced me to move. But she especially doesn't feel bad for emboldening people to the mindset of publicly supporting the idea of my lynching. She had no problem stalking and threatening to kill five years before, and she has no regret doing it today because she doesn't actually care. She doesn't feel bad, and she probably won't ever feel bad. And again, despite all of this, I don't wish harm on her. And I don't wish harm on any of the people that did this to me. I just want to be left alone. Contrary to what her viewers might think when they claim I enjoy being in people's mouths, I don't. I want to get on and post my silly videos, hopefully inspire other queer people, and show queer people that we can live happy and normal lives and succeed. And I want to do the thing that I love, which is social media. I don't need controversy or confrontation. I don't even like that I have to do this. I just want a normal life. I also want to make it very abundantly clear that the most successful portion of my career ever was when I was just shit posting. I didn't need to be in people's mouths and read constant dehumanization or see writing on the walls of white queer people jumping to the same Republican mentality of people like me shouldn't have platforms to succeed. I don't enjoy knowing that all it takes is one perceived wrong move for people to pull the pitchforks and torches as they actively threaten my life. It's hard enough being trans on the internet and this might be a crazy thought but i would prefer things like this not be thrown on me in addition to what outsiders from our community view us as it's not fun or quirky or cool for things like this to happen it's not fun or quirky or cool to be in people's mouths to the point where you are forced out of your home and it might be shocking to you to hear this but i don't enjoy knowing that a friend of mine turned her back on me threatened my life and had people publicly ready to lynch me i also want to make it clear this isn't the first time that somebody has done something like this to me okay um if i did that then please take those screenshots to the police so that they can serve justice because that's terrible four years ago a child made a video claiming that i bullied someone to death this quickly resulted in a flood of people threatening my life and calling for my deplatforming. so at this point i don't know if you've seen the video where i talked about someone accusing me of bullying a girl to death well the kid responded and said that he just wanted attention and while I think that's terribly disgusting and I'm definitely going to use this as an opportunity to tell him why that's not okay, um, you don't know how this affects people. You don't know what my mental health is like. You don't know what random people's mental health is like online. So this is a good lesson for you. Do not bully people online. Don't make up rumors just because you want attention from somebody. That is so messed up, no matter what your age is. But with that said, this is a kid. Stop going to the, their profile and telling them to kill themselves or hurt themselves. Um, it doesn't matter if they said it to me. You should not be saying it to them. That is disgusting. After I made the initial response, the person who made the video about me acknowledged that they were doing that all for attention with absolutely no consideration for how it could harm me. And that same sentiment from then is still true four years later. Some people want attention, validation, and affirmation so badly that it'll make them do cruel and unusual things. And that's terrifying because 9 out of 10 times, people like me will end up on the wrong side of that barrel. The reality is, the same way that I didn't want harm or revenge on the person who made that video about me four years ago, is the same way that I don't want harm or revenge on anybody involved in this. But four years later, I'm still having to get on here and remind you that subtle dehumanization in response to the lust for attention is is deadly. And all of this happened because I committed the unspeakable act of being a bad friend. In this case, being a bad friend meant I didn't hand somebody a platform that they weren't entitled to. And I didn't allow them to disrespect and wiretap me and try to control me. And I didn't let them separate me from people who were trying to look out for me and protect me after they saw the writings on the walls. I think the thing that hurts the most about this is that I don't want revenge on these people. Despite people like my former moderator having things like Black Lives Matter in her bio and protecting somebody who endangered my life and even going so far as to publicly talking about experiencing stalkers with somebody with a small platform. Okay, I just wanted to add my two cents to this whole chaperone thing because as somebody who's literally like nobody, I don't have a following over like 100 people on any platform. I wanted to say that what chaperone said in her video is 100% correct. She doesn't owe us shit because she is just a random bitch to most of us because none of us actually know her 
know of her. We don't know her. And for people to think that she owes us anything is absolutely mind-boggling to me. To watch all of this unfold and watch people like Belle protect Lexi is a slap in the face. You're against violence towards black bodies unless it's somebody that you don't agree with. You believe that white creators and celebrities are entitled to their privacy and to safety unless it's somebody like me. And again, despite all of this, I can't imagine wishing violence on these people. So why is it so easy for them to dehumanize me? Because even if I had committed the unspeakable act of being a bad friend, why is it that my life matters so little that all it took for them to pull out the metaphorical white hoods and pitchforks was bad friendship? And it's a reminder that as much as they say my life matters, it really only matters if I have something to offer in exchange for it. With all that said, Lexi, you and your community can't hurt me anymore. You can't dox my address because you don't know where I live. And with that, I've taken away all the power that you have over me. And now the world knows exactly the kind of person that you are and why they should stay away from you. You don't deserve a platform. Because as much as you feel entitled to one, you've shown exactly the kind of person you would be with the scope of influence that you want. But now that I've said everything I need to say, I don't really know how to end this video. So... Thanks for watching and bye. People just, they don't think before they post stuff. And everyone's so fucking obsessed with wanting to get as many likes on their fucking posts or fucking whatever. My my therapist, when I went to jail, tried to have me put away for even longer. And she let me pass the course and then went back and rewrote the thing, basically saying I was like a danger to threat society and myself. And I'd fucking bite my fucking face off.